Hi, this is Mo Volans for AudioTuts.com, and in the next couple of videos I'm going to be making, we're going to be concentrating on the subject of audio editing. In this video, we're going to be looking at a more technical aspect of audio editing and audio editing applications. And in the next video um, that I make in the series, we'll concentrate on something a little bit more creative. So look out for that in the next week or two. In this video, I'm going to be using an entire track that's just been mixed. So it's really a pre-master. Um, but you know, this could be a DJ mix or it could be um, a finished master uh, that you want to um, apply some edits to. And we're just going to be looking at simple edits. So maybe some fades, some trims uh, and some normalization. But really what I'm focusing on are the two different ways that we can achieve these edits in different applications. A destructive um, edit or a layer based edit. And I'm going to show you the difference uh, between these and you can really decide which one's best for you and the application that might be best for you. We're going to be using standalone audio editors here, two in particular on the Mac. Um, I'm using Wavelab 7, um, which is, you know, it's not been around for forever on the Mac, but uh, if you're a PC user, Windows user, you'll probably be aware of this. Um, it's now available on both platforms. So it's, you know, a great mastering application and it's a, a nice standalone audio editor um, that really is a bit more specialized than what you're going to experience in your DAW. Um, I'm also using an Apple um, specific um, application called Soundtrack Pro. This comes bundled with Logic Studio. So um, it's highly likely you've got it if you've got Logic Studio. And uh, it's very Apple. Um, so if you've uh, used a lot of Apple applications, this might be a better one for you. Now this, is, uh, this works with layer-based um, editing, and we're going to look at that second. Uh, Wavelab's a little bit more traditional in the way that it applies its edits, and they are destructive. And what do I mean by destructive editing? Well, let's get into it, and I'll, I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. So like I said, we've got this, um, this file here, and I'll just play some of it back. It's just a master that I've uh, done for a friend, or a mix master. It's actually, um, you know, like a, a trancy sort of dance track, pretty epic dance track. And... Um, it's just about to go into some mastering processes. Now, all I've got here is just a, uh, a Sony Oxford limiter on the master output. Um, I've not got the entire mastering chain. This is just to make sure it's up to up to level. Um, but pretty much what I want to do is prepare a clip. Now, this is just a, a hypothetical situation, but imagine that uh, I want to prepare a clip ready for web-based distribution. Uh, I don't want to give the whole track out. So to do this, I'm obviously going to have to select a section. I'll just stop the playback there. Select a section and decide which bit that we want to use. Uh, now, I probably want to use like the end of the breakdown, maybe the last sort of three quarters of the track. So let's say we want to use this section here. Um, now, I can crop it. I'm going to go ahead and trim that. So that's the only section we've got. Great. Now I want to apply some fades. So I'm going to select the, uh, the front of the track. And we're just going to go fade in. And I'm just going to use a linear fade. It doesn't have to be exact. That's a little long. So what we can do in this situation is we can just undo both of those processes. And if you want to redo the processes, it's just exactly the same as undoing and redoing in your DAW. So what we're left with is this small section we want to use. But we do want to apply some fades. So I'm going to grab the front section and we're going to go to fade in and just a linear fade and grab the end section and do the same thing. Fade out. And now we're ready with our clip. Okay, so the level's a little low. Um, the limit is taking care of the level and it's making sure it's at zero, but I want to make sure that the file's uh, pushing out as much level as possible. Now, you don't want to do this to every file, but this is just to show you we can apply normalization and this will take us to zero dB, um, or the loudest point at least. And now we can check our, our limiter and make sure that it's not overloading. Great. Now you can see that every edit we've done has been totally destructive. It's imprinted to the file we're working on. So unless we hit undo, 
um, it's actually imprinted. So if I now render the file down here um, and I decide to keep the processing in the limiting um, and I let it do its thing, we've now got a, these are two tabs here, we, this is our processed file. We've now got a limited uh, trimmed file. And it's completely imprinted. And that's what destructive editing is. It just simply means that every time you do an edit, like a normalization or a trim or a fade, and the simple edits we did there to get to our clip, you're going to end up with exactly that on your final file that you save or export. In comparison and in contrast to that, we can look at uh, layer based editing, which is a lot less destructive. Um, but it can take a little more time. So let's hide WaveLab and we'll bring in um, Soundtrack Pro. And this is exactly the same file. I've actually got a few more um, plugins on this one. And um, there's four plugins. You can see down here, there's some uh, Brainworks and uh, SSL uh, stuff from uh, Waves and the Oxford Limiter again, and something from SPL, which is the um, Pass EQ, which is a pretty impressive mastering EQ from SPL. Um, but basically the same sort of thing. Uh, pre-master and so let's take the same section and well more or less the same section and we're going to go with uh, trim here Okay, we're a little early, so let's grab that and trim it again. And what we're left with is exactly the same section as we had before. What you'll notice is that through even just these small um, adjustments we've made, I've really only applied a couple of trims. We've now got these things here uh, that have appeared in the actions list on the left, and it says trim, trim. Now, if I untick these, it'll actually undo the two actions. Okay, so. Let's zoom in. You see, we've got the entire file now. But if I retick one of them, it'll redo the trim and redo the trim. So that's exactly where we're at. And it's that easy to undo things. And you can actually rearrange these in the list. You can undo any uh, particular one. So it's almost like having a real time undo list visible right there. So although you can undo things in WaveLab and destructive editors, you haven't got the exact fine control under, uh, over each action that you perform. So let's do some fades, uh, and I'm just going to fade in here from the shortcut and fade out. Just get that back in the center, and we'll do the normalize that we did uh, in WaveLab. So exactly the same edits, except you can see here we've got again a longer list, and you can just untick that fade look, and in real time it will undo it and redo it for you. Same with the normalize, and it's really fast as well. I really like this about Soundtrack Pro. I mean, sometimes when I'm in here to do a really fast edit and I want to uh, quickly edit a file and save it, it can be a bit of a hassle because if you save this, it will save it as a Soundtrack Pro document. And if you want to save it as an actual WAV file or an AIF, you have to flatten the actions. If you've worked with Photoshop or any other uh, big audio editor, uh, sorry, image editor, you'll definitely recognize this style of editing. Um, you'll recognize that you have to flatten these actions into uh, a finished product. So let's go ahead and do that right now because this is, I'm happy with this. This is exactly what we want. We can go to flatten all actions or flatten audible actions. So if you untick some of them uh, and you flatten audible actions, it'll only use the ticked ones. Uh, flatten all actions, it will obviously use all of them. That's what we're going to do now. And there you go. They've all disappeared. And this is where we were at in WaveLab. That's your destructive edit right there. Um, now you can undo flatten all actions. So if you've made a mistake, you can go back and undo that. So you've still got that level of un undo, even if you flatten the actions. Uh, but if we go ahead and redo it, um, we've now got our effects on and we can bounce the whole thing. Um, and that, that'll be exactly the same as bouncing in WaveLab. Uh, and we'll end up with that same final file. So there you go. That's the difference between non-destructive editing or, or uh, layer-based editing and destructive audio editing. And hopefully if you've got a, an application that does one or the other, this will now make a bit more sense. And you might decide that it's either for you or not for you. 
Um, other applications like uh, SoundForge Pro, for example, are probably more destructive editor. And then Triumph um, is a great audio editor, um, a smaller, more lightweight audio editor that um, uses layer-based editing as well. So you might want to check that out. Um, hopefully this has been some use to you and it's uh, made a bit more sense out of layer-based editing. And in the next video, we'll look at a bit more of a creative aspect in audio editing applications.